All right, so this is just a bit of a video overview of um, what you're going to be doing for project one. Project one is an essay. Uh, it's a five to six page paper. Uh, and remember that this is project one, whereas project two is either a longer essay, a team written essay, or a team created podcast. Okay. So project one is possibly the only official essay okay, that you might write in this class, depending on what you choose for project two. So uh, for this project one, um, you're going to be writing about um, elements from one or more of the three texts that we've read thus far, the Tempest, the Crusoe excerpts, and Swift's uh, Modest Proposal. Uh, what you're going to do is choose one of these following questions and uh, write your essay in response to it. Okay. So the first question, you're going to choose one of these texts and, and respond to this question. How does your text represent differences in power or privilege? Focus on one character or scene in particular, though you can support your ideas with general references to other textual elements or readings that we've done. So what this asks you to do is to take one of the texts that we've read, Shakespeare's The Tempest, or the excerpts from Crusoe, or A Modest Proposal, uh, and write an essay that responds to this question. How does The Tempest represent differences in power or privilege? How does Crusoe depict differences in power or privilege? Okay, and so on. Uh, your thesis will be the answer to this question. The Tempest uh, represents differences in power through the lens of race or racial difference in the relationship between Caliban, Miranda, and Prospero. There would be a thesis statement, okay? Uh, question number two, this is your option number two. How does your text represent Englishness? So again, you'll be choosing one of the three texts that we've looked at so far, and uh, you'll answer the question based on that text. Uh, focus on one scene or set of scenes in particular, but again, you can support your ideas with references to other textual elements you know, in, in the, 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 the reading. Uh, so what does this mean? How does your text represent Englishness? Well, think about um, Crusoe in uh, Robinson Crusoe on his island, recreating Englishness on this deserted Caribbean island. Um, what exactly does that look like? He talks about his castle, he talks about his country house, uh, you know, it, at one moment he talks about his, um, his clothing and his mustache. Uh, so look at scenes from that particular text, okay, that particularly uh, help you address this issue of, of Englishness. And your thesis would be an answer to this. So Crusoe represents Englishness by reference to other non-English cultures, and then explain, okay? So you wanna have a thesis that will help you respond to that. You could do the same thing with The Tempest, even though The Tempest is not about English people, ostensibly, but a rather about Italians. Shakespeare is an English writer, and he's sort of placed this story displaced this story from the English island you know, onto this Caribbean island. Okay, so in the Tempest, uh, Englishness can be seen in the qualities, certain qualities that uh, characters like Miranda, Prospero, and the Italians um, who come to the island share, like blah 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 blah. Okay, uh, and so on. Uh, the third option that you have is to look at questions of islands and how they're represented. Okay, So this one asks you to choose two texts all right, and focus on one scene from each. You can add a few you know additional references but I want you to really zero in on you know a good scene right or set of scenes that are closely related. Okay? So you'll be looking at um, the ways that islands are imagined comparatively, and you're going to try to suggest why islands are so important in this literature. Okay. Uh, so choose two texts 
and focus in on specific aspects and then compare the way that islands are imagined, trying to suggest why islands are so important in this literature. So your thesis would be something like in both uh, The Tempest and A Modest Proposal, uh, the role of the island is displaced from England. Uh, and in each case, they're treated as laboratories for social experimentation right? in different ways. Okay? Uh, so that would be one similar kind of thesis statement. Your thesis statement should be a, an answer to the question. Right? How are islands imagined? Why are islands so important in this literature? Your thesis is a response to that question, specific response to that question. And your fourth option is here, asking you to focus in on language. So language is really important in these texts, um, as we've seen throughout our reading and discussion. So uh, you're going to be focusing on one text in particular and describing how language is used to empower. Okay? Uh, and this empowering can be good, it can be bad, right? <laughs> it can be all sorts of things in between. But how is language being used, okay, in the text that you've chosen? Uh, and again, you want to look in one text in particular. You want to really zero in on specific places. Uh, and it'll look differently. Your, your thesis might look differently uh, in each of these, uh, in, in each of these texts, if you choose at either of these texts. Um, you could look at uh, the way that Crusoe uh, teaches Friday how to speak and what the problems might be in that. Um, you could think about the way that Swift is using satire to sort of reuse language in new and unexpected ways for critical purposes. You could look at the way that um, Prospero uses language to shape reality, okay, um, and so on. You could also think about the way that the nobles, you know, use language to kind of come up with, uh, to respond to Saint Gonzalo, um, to, to convince each other that they should kill Alonzo, and, and so on. Uh, so lots of things that you can write about. Choose one of these four topics, all right, uh, and proceed accordingly. So in each case, with whatever topic you choose, uh, you want to make sure that you have a central guiding thesis that answers that question. You want to make sure that you have clear and well-chosen evidence in quotations. Now, what does that mean? Well-chosen, in this case, means that if you're talking about language in Crusoe, you're choosing a passage that has to do with language in Crusoe, all right? Uh, you're not choosing a passage that is sort of, you know, adjacent to that or unrelated to that or maybe, maybe, maybe even really, really, really far away from it, but still sort of tenuously related, okay? You want something that's directly, clearly related to your topic. Uh, you also want to make sure that you have a full explanation of how you're reading, interpreting, or understanding that evidence. And this should include paraphrase, should include overall interpretation, as well as specific points of significance. So if you're unsure what this means, Think about the passage presentation. Remember what I was asking you to do in the passage presentation. You want to contextualize your quote, right? Um, where does it occur in the text? What's important for us to know about where, it, where this occurs, where this moment that I'm looking at occurs and what has happened before it and so on, right? Tell me in general um, what is happening here. Give me a paraphrase of it. Um, give me the quote, okay? Give me an overall interpretation of what's significant about it, right? This quote shows us that blah, 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 blah. And then zero in on specific points of significance, okay? So in order for you to use uh, textual evidence well, you want to really zero in on uh, the details. But you can't only focus on the details. You also have to contextualize it, tell us in general what's going on here, why is this important, okay? Uh, so... You can ask me questions if you have any sort of concerns about this, what this might mean, but uh, you, know, you don't want to just put a quote in there and then leave, right? Um, you don't quote and run. <laughs> Tell me really what's going on in this. Uh, you want to have an introduction and a conclusion that introduces and concludes your ideas. 
And then you want to have body paragraphs that respond to specific parts of your thesis and that are controlled by some kind of topic sentence, right? You want to have effective transitions between your ideas. So you don't leap from point to point to point. You have one point that leads into this point that then maybe is contrasted by this point, right? So you use your transitions to help explain that. Uh, keep in mind that a paper of five pages, this is an article of five to six pages, all right? Double space, that's what ML, part of what MLA means. So a paper of five pages should have at least 10 paragraphs that are about half a page each, okay? So that should give you a sense of how to manage your time and space, right? It should also give you a clear sense of how, how, um, how much you have to explain, right? You don't wanna leave anything to your reader's imagination. You wanna collect, connect all of the possible dots, okay? Uh, you do want to have clear and effective writing in English with a minimum of grammatical errors. If you do need help for this, don't use an online service, okay? Don't use a translator like Google Translate. Use tutors and services that are available to you as Marymount students, all right? I want to hear your words, not the words of Google Translate. Okay. I want to hear your words and your ideas and not ideas that you've generated from, that you've you sort of discovered from, uh, from doing research. Okay. I want you to use only the materials from our class. Okay. Um, if you feel like you need to do some reading uh, to inform yourself further, um, you know, that's fine, but I don't want you to be drawing on that fully in your essays. Okay, I want your essays to be you. This means that you shouldn't be using quotes from other authors. You shouldn't be using paraphrases from other authors. You shouldn't be using ideas from other authors. You should be using your ideas, things we've talked about in class, the podcasts that we've listened to, okay? Uh, you do wanna have a works cited page with your primary source. If you do use, um, say, a, a, a podcast from the BBC, that, and you quote it in there, you reference it in there, you actually incorporate material from it, uh, then that should also be in your works cited page, but nothing else, okay? Uh, you do wanna have a significant, useful, relevant title. So no titles to your essay that look like project one, okay? And a, a title for this essay might be something like, um, let's say you're doing uh, this question about Englishness right? A title for an essay might like this, depending on what you're arguing, uh, what your what your essay is actually specifically about, uh, might be something like um, English versus other in the Tempest, okay? Something like that. So make sure that your topic, uh, sorry, your thesis is, uh, your title is, is specific and relevant, okay? That it tells us something about what you're writing about. And just as a final reminder, I want you to use no external sources, only what we've used in class, your own brain nugget, your reading skills, your imagination, all right? Um, I know that in many cases, uh, writing an essay like this can be really challenging, especially if English isn't your, your, your mother tongue, right? If you're, you have another mother tongue like Spanish or Arabic or uh, French, right? Um, but that's part of the challenge, right? Of taking an education in English. Um, be sure that you're using your own brain nugget and your own words in English, right? If you need help with this, I'm happy to help you. So is the uh, Academic Success Center and the hub on campus. So uh, let me know if you have any questions about that, but I have included a rubric down here. Uh, so you have a central guiding thesis that answers the question you've chosen, clear and well-chosen quotes with accurate paraphrases and citations, full explanation of evidence that includes these things that we talked about. Um, do you have a works cited page? Uh, is the length appropriate? Is the title uh, specific? Is the MLA form there? And then writing, including paraphrasing and transitions as well as clarity of writing in English, okay? So uh, let me know if you have any questions. Get started thinking about this. Remember, everything is really compressed in this summer class. Um, you'll have a draft due. Uh, for discussion in, you know, in our Monday class, and then the final draft will be due with your homework on Wednesday evening ahead of our Thursday class, right? So I hope that helps. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about this. If you are unclear 
about MLA format, do Google it. You can Google it just like this, MLA style. And I'm gonna also add OWL Purdue because I know that's a useful website. All right, MLA formatting and style guide, the Purdue Writing Lab. Here's a fantastic resource, it tells you all about MLA formatting and style. It also will show you the general format of your paper, what your what your paper should sort of look like on the page, right? Uh, MLA doesn't use a, a cover page or a running header. It just has one header here for page one, and then every other page will have your last name and page number here. It's all in double spaced and so on, right? You can also take a note of this um, title. Andrew Carnegie, the father of middle-class America. This is kind of what I mean by a specific relevant title. This is what this essay is going to be about, okay? Uh, it's not just essay one or project two. Okay. Right, so this has a lot of other useful information in it. It's also got information about APA. It's also got information about Chicago and, and other styles. Okay, so this is a really useful resource, Purdue's online writing lab. Um, they have good, good information okay? and also lots of useful writing tips and so on. So uh, let me know if you have any questions, but um, otherwise, uh, that is project one, and I'm excited to see what you all write about, okay? Feel free to get in touch if you have specific questions or if you need help working through your argument or finding good evidence or, you know, figuring out how to write, um, you know, in the way that you want to write, uh, convey all the information you want to convey, right? Happy to help. Uh, if you can't meet during regular office hours, shoot me an email uh shoot me an email outside of that okay uh, i did put our uh office hours here in our zoom tab so you can access them a little bit more easily but if this time doesn't work for you then of course you can um you can email 